Mr. President, may we recognize Senator Richard Gordon? Senator Gordon is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Colleagues, my fellow citizens, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Last Friday, September the 2nd, 2016, we all know of the dastardly act perpetrated by lawless elements or what have you. To date, Abu Sayyaf has claimed that they were the ones who perpetrated the bombing. But nonetheless, Mr. President, we were all shocked. We were all pained by the carnage of 14 people and 71 injured. It caused me to write on my Facebook account the following. We commiserate and pray for the people of Davao City, particularly the families of the 14 people killed and the 71 persons hurt as of the latest report. This has happened before in Davao and was, pro was probably not unexpected considering the dastardly actions made previously by lawless elements who are now under unanticipated and effective interdiction from the government. Let us all at this time be reflective, of deliberate, and calm as a people. Let us do our share by being constantly vigilant and alert as we continue with our daily normal lives and not allow such heinous acts to deter us from moving forward. For in allowing these incidents to stop our normal way of living, we would have allowed those who terrorize to win. The President as Commander-in-Chief has now called out our armed forces to suppress lawless violence. Our Constitution allows him to do so. And taken alone, he is not suspending the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus or proclaiming martial law. The Davao bombing is an act of terrorism by a known terrorist organization that must be outlawed by the full force of the law as provided in the Human Security Act of 2007 and under anti -terrorism measure, other anti-terrorism measures. I call on all of us to support the President and armed forces and police forces and their families as well, as well as the victims of these dastardly actions. Mr. President, as we commiserate with the people of Davao, we must remember that this is not the first time, as I said in my Facebook account, that bombings have occurred in our country, let alone the whole world. In fact, in the Red Cross, we have been practicing and we have been trying to organize all the chapters in the communities of our country to be aware and to be alert, have their ambulances ready, have the first aiders ready, so that in case there is an event like this, we would be ready. And in fact, we were there, uh, along with other responders. Mr. President, in Osami City, a ferry bombing occurred in February 25, 2000. 39 were killed. There are many others, sundry items, you know, it's becoming as if it's just statistics. Three killed in bombings in General Santos, one killed in Metro Manila in May 21, Jensen multiple bombings January 24, June 24, two killed, Metro Manila, Rizal Day, multiple bombings, 22 killed in Metro Manila. In Basilan, beheadings near the middle town, 11 killed, including our armed forces. In Pagadian, bus terminal bombing September 4, 2001, three killed. Sambuanga, Puerto Cultural Center bombing, October 28, five killed. General Santos bombing at Fit March store, 15 killed on April 21, 2002. Sambuanga, karaoke bar bombing, October 2, 2002, four killed. Kidapawan, bus terminal bombing, the list goes on, eight killed. Sambuanga Mall, six killed. Metro Manila, 2002, two killed. Sambuanga, Fort Pilar, 2002, October, one killed. Maguindanao bombing in Datu Piang, 16 killed. Takurong City, 2002, nine killed. Kidapawan bombing, 2003, one killed. Kabakan, North Cotabato bombing, February 20, 2003, one killed. Cotabato City, Awang Airport bombing, one killed in February 20, 2003. Davao International Airport, and I was Secretary of Tourism at that time, and we went over there to really make sure that our tourism would not get hurt, but it did to a certain extent, but we were able to recover. March 4, 2003, 22 killed, and immediately followed by a Tagum bombing on the same day, one killed. Davao War, Sasa, was bombed in April, Your Honor, April 2, 2003, 17 killed. 
the list goes on. Coronadol public market, 10 killed in 2003. And I can go on and on. Super ferry bombing, which is, I, I'd like to go to the big ones. Parang Stadium bombing, January 4, 2004, 24 killed. Super ferry bombing outside Manila Bay, right here. Right there, Corregidor. 116 killed in February 27, 2004. The list goes on and on. Valentine bombings, eight killed. And Samuaga multiple bombings on August 10, 2005, 30 injured. In Basilian war bombing, four killed in August 28, 2005, and so forth and so on, culminating in the bombing uh, just last Friday. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I cite this so that we would not be come impervious to all this because I suppose when there are so many killings, it becomes a matter of fact to us. It becomes a matter of statistics. And that's something that I would not like to happen in our country, Your Honor. And because of this, I rise today, perhaps on a question of collective privilege or to maybe manifest something that we should not be helpless. We will not, you know, go quietly into the night and allow the evil amongst us and within us, not only here but in the entire world, to go without being arrested, being prosecuted, and yes, at times, being killed. At the moment, Your Honor, it will not be unexpected for us to have more bombings. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we've seen a long list of bombings in the past, bigger than the one in the vow. But at the same time, Your Honor, we must remember that the president has just declared the ceasefire and the NPA has declared the ceasefire along with the NDF so that now he is able to address the problem of Abu Sayyaf which has killed foreigners and caused us tremendous reputational damage. Norwegians killed, decapitated, soldiers killed, decapitated, and so forth and so on. Canadians, Canadians also, two killed. Uh, even Indonesians now kidnapped. And they are paying for Wild ransoms, your Malaysians. I made a statement when that happened that one of these days, they might take the law into their own hands and do a raid on Antep. You will recall the raid on Antep made by the Israelis. 2,000 miles away, they went to Uganda to rescue their hostages. It may not be far-fetched for our neighbors to intervene in our country and try to rescue Indonesian hostages, Malaysian hostages, or even Canadian hostages, or even American hostages, your Honor. And that is why I stand four square in supporting our armed forces in removing what all of us know has become a blight in our country. Talagang matagal na, tagus na sa buto ang ginagawa nito mga tao nangingidap at pumapatay at nagpuputo ng ulo at lahat. You remember the other day in the inquiry, a mother of a soldier texted the uh, his her son. And uh, the answer was, patay na yung anak mo, tinutul ko na ang ulo. At kung pupunta ka dito, puputulin ko rin ang ulo mo. That is impunity. That is ignominy, Your Honor. And that is why, today, in my statement, initially, I cited my Facebook account. And I said that we must support our armed forces and police forces and their families as well. And that is why when the president, you know, declares a state of lawlessness, mind you, not a suspension of the writ, not a declaration of martial law, but a, uh, a state of lawlessness is declared so that he could add more of our units uh, to man the checkpoints, to go after these malefactors, this evil amongst us, and that we should do so because this is the only thing that they understand at times, most of the time, in fact. Now, Your Honor, if we do not do so, uh, we would be helpless in this scenario. Now, Your Honor, the Declaration of State of Lawlessness has no specific review. Under the Constitution, martial law has automatic review. Under the Constitution, Your Honor, the President either comes in person or delivers a letter to the Congress explaining why he has declared martial law. And in the case of the suspension of the writ of habeas corpus, it can only cover rebellion and invasion. In other words, the checks and balances are maintained, Your Honor. 
Now, in the case of a state of lawlessness, there is no such automatic review, although, of course, we are a co-equal branch of the government. The Senate, the Congress, is a co-equal branch of the government, and under the doctrine of you know, separation of powers, we can do so. And so, Your Honor, I would like to state here for the record that we have a Committee on Accountability of Public Officers and Investigations called the Blue Ribbon Committee, which was uh, foisted upon me and I accepted. But, Your Honor, I only say this, if only to assuage those of us who rightfully and perhaps legally will be concerned about the declaration of a state of lawlessness. Some of us are asking for a bill of particulars. Some of us, our people, are asking that, you know, this be explained. Well, to my mind, I don't think, to my mind, we cannot wait for all these niceties, but we can, in the Senate, open the Blue Ribbon Committee to any complaint, Your Honor, by any citizen, if he feels that he has been aggrieved by a military checkpoint, or by any military man, or a policeman, or any member of the government to come to the Blue Ribbon Committee at any time, and I've instructed the staff of the Blue Ribbon Committee so to do, to accept any complaint, so that if the police are not doing their jobs by having an internal affairs investigation right away, then the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee is open to that, Your Honor. The, the legislature's work, Your Honor, the Senate official specifically, will remain unhampered. We will not allow it to be hampered. We will debate, we will pass laws, we will exercise our oversight functions in order to ensure that the other parts of government do its work properly and within the bounds of law. But Your Honor, at the moment, there is a big offensive going on, perhaps one of the most major offensives. Because of the ceasefire, we are now able to put in more armed forces in Basilan, and because of that, there is that danger that lurks that they will try to distract the focus of the government by bombing other places. And like I said, we have to be deliberate, we have to be careful, we have to be vigilant against any such attacks. In fact, Your Honor, we have become over vigilant. A lot of text messages are coming. This morning I got a text message that says the ASG is targeting UP Diliman. And the other day, uh, this morning, uh, yesterday I had to issue a statement that the Red Cross has not issued any statement that malls are going to be bombed. On the contrary, we should just remain, like I said, leading our normal lives, but making sure that we're alert. In fact, if the Senate President will recall, while we were there in the refectory the other day, the Senate President immediately called our Secretary, our Sergeant at Arms, uh, General Balahaja, to the, uh, to the refectory because I intimated that because of the offensive going on, and this was before the bombing, before the bombing. Before the bombing. this was before the explosion, that we should be careful here in our own offices here because we are not relatively sure that we are, can or may not be the target. In other words, all of us may be targets, but it doesn't mean that we cannot go on sessions every day. We must really make sure that we promote the necessary security measures that will protect not only us, but more especially the people who come here <coughs> and the country as a whole must have that capability. And that is why I'm in support of this uh, move of the president to declare a state of lawlessness, and he has assured us that it is not a state of martial law, it is not suspending the writ of habeas corpus, and therefore, if we want to really eradicate this blight, the budget is about to be here in front of us, and we should see where we can actually give the necessary support by way of peace initiatives, not just a piece of paper uh, in Mindanao about, you know, having a separate homeland, but really, <coughs> the peace initiatives required are the social economic initiatives that must be done in Mindanao, particularly in ARM and in other areas. Among other things, education, the social support that is needed to make sure that we can get back the people who have been pained by so many years of being excluded, rightly or wrongly, they should not feel that because actually Mindanao has got their seaports, they have their airports that have been improved, uh, you know, Cagayan de Oro and uh, Davao and soon Sambuanga and certainly a railroad, hopefully, but it will not stop unless we really come up with the social initiatives that are necessary 
so that we can get our people better educated, that we can have our people there to get better opportunities in life. And so, Mr. President, I conclude that, uh, this uh, little discourse, if you will, by appealing to all of us to, make, to give the support and to make sure uh, that the armed forces feel that they are not our enemies, or the police feel that they are not our enemies. True enough, there are evil people among the armed forces and among the police agencies of our country, but most of them, great majority of them, and by the way, a policeman lost his life in that bombing. A policeman also was looking for his wife, who just went there and found her dead. So it's important to know that all bombs or all bullets coming from manufacturers do not have a specific address. It is written to whom it may concern, and sorry ka na lang kung tamaan ka. And so, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, I, uh, you know, I, 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 I withdraw, I, I, I make, uh, I finish my uh, discourse today with an appeal to the Lord Almighty for prayers to all our people who have been hurt or being marginalized by what is happening there and for a quick resolution of the crisis upon us because, Your Honor, today, Bangkok is not spared from bombings. Even China is not spared from bombings. Europe is certainly not is, uh, uh, spared from bombings. In fact, they're even imposing a Burkini ban in their beaches. They're really going overboard. And, and you know, it's become a source of great discomfort for the rest of the world. But in the Philippines, we must not give in and we must make sure that we have that resolve and the support necessary to really quell the problem, both militarily and, above all, socially and, you know, peacefully. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Gordon. Thank you. Mr. President, I um, move that we refer the privileged speeches of uh, Senators Bam Aquino, uh, Mig Subiri, and uh, Dick Gordon to the Committee on uh, Public Order and Dangerous Drugs, and uh, secondarily to the Committee on Defense and security, Mr. President. There's a motion. Uh, uh, Senator Gordon. One minute suspension, Mr. Chairman. May I request that for a while? Just a clarification of the majority. Majority Leader, is it okay? A minute suspension. Yeah. A minute suspension. I have no objection, Mr. President. General. Fourteen people killed, and the 71 persons hurt as of the latest report. This has happened before in Davao and was, pro was probably not unexpected considering the dastardly actions made previously by lawless elements who are now under unanticipated and effective interdiction from the government. Let us all at this time, be reflective, uh, deliberate, and calm as a people. Let us do our share by being constantly vigilant and alert as we continue with our daily normal lives and not allow such heinous acts to deter us from moving forward. For in allowing these incidents to stop our normal way of living, we would have allowed those who terrorize to win. The President has come to date. Abu Sayyaf has claimed that they were the ones who perpetrated the bombing but nonetheless, Mr. President, we were all shocked. We were all pained by the carnage of 14 people and 71 injured. It caused me to write on my Facebook account the following. We commiserate and pray for the people of Davao City, particularly the families of the... Mr. President, may we recognize Senator Richard Gordon. Senator Gordon is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. President, colleagues, my fellow citizens, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Last Friday, September the 2nd, 2016, we all know of the dastardly act perpetrated by lawless elements or what have you. Commander-in-Chief has now called out our armed forces to suppress lawless violence. Our Constitution allows him to do so, and taken alone, he is not suspending the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus or proclaiming martial law. 
The double bombing is an act of terrorism by a known terrorist organization that must be outlawed 